Now, it is a, a really a great pleasure that I can introduce to you uh, Dina Story. And uh, Dina is the head uh, of sustainability operations at Expo 2020 Dubai. And we're really uh, grateful that we are able to have a welcome here from the Expo. Uh, and if you've worked in an Expo, you know that to take time to do anything else is really not an easy thing to do. And so I really appreciate the fact that Dina has taken the time to uh, speak to us all today. And, um, and in particular with her role in sustainability, which is we believe an important feature of uh, AIPH Expos in the future and something which they are, uh, are certainly uh, have achieved uh, a lot here in Dubai. So um, it's with uh, great pleasure that I can introduce to speak to you now, Dina Story. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and it's a great pleasure and honor to be here, uh, to be in front of all of you to talk about Expo. Um, just a bit of background, I've been working with Expo for about five years. I have a Master's in Sustainability Management, and I've worked uh, very closely both here in the UAE and globally uh, with regards to sustainability and embedding sustainability into, um, into cities as well as for now Expo. Um, just for you, I, I don't know if some of you have visited Expo, but I will talk to you a bit about uh, how Expo looks like. And Expo is about twice the size of Monaco, <clears throat> just to put things into perspective. Uh, the, the site is divided into uh, three petals, uh, each one representing a sub-theme, sustainability uh, in green. Then you have Opportunity, the Opportunity District, which is about human opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, and the Sustainable Development Goal, <coughs> and mobility. And when we talk about mobility, it's just not human mobility, but digital mobility and ideas mobility. Um, so in a nutshell, actually the whole site, all of the, all of the themes, actually embed sustainability within them. So... As you go through the site, um, you're going to notice that um, the green spaces and the site, the, the areas around the site are all integrated within what, um, what we understand about sustainability. So what was our vision and how did we start this? <coughs> Sorry. Yes. So when the UAE went to bid for the expo, they made a commitment to deliver one of the most sustainable expos in world history. And at the end of the day, that's a very big um, commitment. So our goal was to, de to actually decipher those commitments. And we broke, in the, we broke them down into four key objectives, which is, of course, leaving a legacy of sustainable infrastructure, uh, catalyzing sustainability in Dubai and the UAE, um, increasing public awareness, which is something very important, both on the Expo site as well as within, um, outside the boundaries of the site, and developing solutions that are practical and can be scalable beyond the boundaries of the site. And that is something very important, because what's applicable in Europe or the US may not be applicable here and vice versa. So that whatever solutions we have have to be practical and can be um, replicated outside the boundaries of the site. So, in our strategy, we broke it down to integrating sustainability into all aspects of the expo, um, impacting beyond the boundaries of the site, and then inspiring others to do more. And this is basically how we broke down our day-to-day -day operations. Within the site, you're going to see sustainability embedded in every aspect. And what I mean by that is that we will look at our sustainability infrastructure. So I will talk a little bit more about our infrastructure. Um, over 80% of the site will stay for legacy. A lot of people ask me, well, what happens after Expo? Well, the site will become District 2020, a human-centric, walkable city of the future. And it was built for that. In fact, the first uh, department that was ever established at, at Expo was the Legacy Department. 
And when we were putting the de designs uh, of the site, we focused mainly on, well, what would it look like after the expo finishes? So, with regards to infrastructure, it was very important for us to ensure that the infrastructure is sustainable, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in, in the coming few slides. Our showcases and installations and our landscape um, really focuses on presenting what can be done here. So all of our uh, plants are native and adaptive. Our um, showcases include desert farm, the desert farm, which looks at a circular way of uh, growing the desert. Um, and then we have a number of impact projects, uh, such as the food waste, uh, food rescue program, whereby we rescue f food that would uh, generally go to landfill. But because it's edible, because we've certified it as safe, we then provide it to uh, lower income families, um, and others around the city. Um, and we have a number of events and experiences, some of which would, you will be able to see, uh, hopefully, in the next few days. So our legacy um, is not just about the infrastructure of what we put together. It is also about the policies and procedures and how we actually did this, because um, it is not an easy feat to say, OK, we're going to have a sustainable expo. It's, it's, it's not as simple as that. So our policies, our procedures, how we achieve lead, sequel, and hopefully well for the District 2020, how we are creating a 15-minute walkable city that was thought about um, six, seven years ago when we really started planning for the expo. And of course, our inspiration and education, not just for everybody here in the room, but for the youngsters who are walking through and saying to their parents now, I don't want to use any more single-use plastic. So our goal was that inspiration and education going forward. What was our approach? So in order for us to be able to really integrate sustainability, we wanted to ensure that we actually, uh, that our strategy stems from the sustainable development goals, so they kind of lead the way for us. The, the UAE Vision 2021, because don't forget, we started working on this a long time ago. And of course, the Dubai Plan 2021, which we now have updated into looking at the new urban plan that is coming up. Um, so the Dubai uh, Expo 2020 strategy really stemmed from that. We have about over 44 uh, KPIs that we've been measuring over the past five years uh, to ensure that we meet our targets, and I'll so show you some of the uh, outcomes of this as well. We've also connected this to the state of the green economy uh, ambitions of the UAE. And, and the reason for that is because we always look at sustainability at having a an environmental uh, value, but everybody doesn't um, quite uh, link the economic value. And we think that the economic value of sustainability is just as important as the environmental and the social. So all of the initiatives that we have are very much linked to the economic impact of what we can achieve. And you can see this in our sustainability reports um, on our website. So, for example, when we talk about the circular economy and how we divert uh, waste from landfill, we look at what um, is the economic value of the, the waste that we produce and how can we work with our waste management partners to actually utilize that waste to generate income for smaller businesses. Uh, one of the things I, I always say is, you know, when you're going down Sheikh Zayed Road and you see those big billboards, those build big billboards, the expo ones as well, are not recyclable. They go straight to landfill. So what we did was we worked with a small SME to actually create uh, bags and uh, products that are given as our corporate gifts out of this. So you're taking a piece of expo with you and we guarantee that big billboard is not going to landfill. And that serves a double purpose. It creates that economic value for the SME, but it also creates a way for us to show the circularity of what we can do. Just to show you how we, how we kind of um, structure our work, and, and I'm going into a little bit more detail because I really do think it's important to understand how the policies and procedures actually drive the way. 
So we have a sustainability policy that is updated um, every other year. We've updated it twice so far so that we can ensure that we can capture the impact of what we're doing. Um, we have the sustainability strategy, as I was mentioning before, and then we have policies and procedures such as the RISE guidelines that, measure, that drive our change. So, for example, the RISE guidelines, which is for our operations, drives the packaging, uh, amount of patch packaging that our food and beverage teams uh, come by. The, the cleaning and waste section ensures that we don't use any chemicals or pesticides and we try to reduce what we can um, in terms of the impact on our um, landscape and so on and so forth. So each one of them has a, a, a purpose and each one of them serves to be um, part of how we also go out to tender for all of our contractors and subcontractors. And by the way, these documents are on our website. So we've created that transparency where we've said, look, we've created this, here you go, you can have it and you can utilize it for what you can and for the future that you are building forward, be it in an organization or in a government space. Our achievements, and I talk about this a lot because as we've been working on this for, for many, many years, we, all, we also have to show what we've done. And as I said, 80% of this site will stay for legacy, which means all of our permanent structures need to meet um, LEED and SQL certification for infrastructure and LEED certification for buildings. Seven of our buildings are LEED Platinum. That includes the KSA Pavilion and the UAE Pavilion, and of course, our beautiful sustainability pavilion. And when you do go to the site, look at the buildings around El Wasl Plaza. They are all LEED Platinum buildings. Um, the ones within the thematic districts, again, they're permanent and they are the home of the smaller uh, countries, um, the assisted countries and the rented countries, and they are all, again, um, LEED certified. <coughs> so, for after Expo, we're looking at the well certification for communities, which is going to be the first well certification for communities here in the region. We've already been talking to the, um, the people at Well, and we've already also been uh, at, uh, making sure that the site meets those requirements. So as we were designing the site and building the site, we had this mission of the Well certification, uh, which means that we had to take into account, of course, not only the temperature and the light and the water and the energy, which we do anyway, we had to take uh, into account the centricity of the city of the future. How is it helping the well-being of the people who will be inhabiting that city in the future? And all of these were put in place so that when the Expo closes its doors by the end of the month, we will start the transition towards District 2020 and we will start the transition and the process towards the well certification. We've also achieved the ISO 2012-1, which is a sustainable mega events uh, certification for um, sustainable management systems. Um, this is, uh, was uh, only one of a few uh, mega events to have achieved this. We've also ensured, as I was talking about the RISE documents, that our uh, food and beverage, our packaging, our retail meet certain standards. The, the products that you buy at the Expo um, uh, stores, such as our t-shirts, have all been looked at through the rise lens, meaning that we have to make sure that the people who created the products that we sell are treated ethically, that the products are made with uh, environmental impact in mind, that um, at, at down to the keychain, uh, all of these uh, products uh, have been vetted through this. And to us, that's very important because we want to ensure that even through our products and our food, that we have the ability to showcase um, and to ensure the, eth the ethical um, products and services that we have at Expo. And again, this, this document was, is kind of its first of its, in, of its kind. We created this in-house and we're very proud of it and we're hoping that we take this on for legacy uh, we've had talks with the UAE government to create the uh, UAE eco-label so that we can ensure that other products and services meet those requirements.
um, with our food rescue uh, program as well, we had to make sure that our food outlets have the options uh, such as vegan, vegan and vegetarian food options. And this is kind of a mandate in, within our sustainability uh, guidelines. We also ensured locality. So a percentage of the food that is presented at the expo for any food and beverage outlets have to include locality. That means they have to buy some of their produce um, from local suppliers and local producers. So a lot of the local farms are actually our suppliers, which is, which is great because, again, the economic value, the ripple effect of what we're trying to do. Um, and then you see we had a vegan festival in January, which was absolutely amazing. And right now, um, as we celebrate Women's Day, um, as you go around, we're actually uh, empowering women chefs across the site. Uh, so you came just at the right time. There's absolutely um, amazing food to be tasted around the site. We also, as I mentioned, have a food rescue program. I'm really, really proud of this one. We've been working very closely with Cisco on this one. Um, because it's not just about uh, servicing the communities, it's about finding an innovative way that can be scaled up. So we've worked very closely with Cisco uh, and with a small startup called Replate, whereby any uh, of our food outlets can actually just send a notification saying, I have extra food in the back of house, and it will get picked up. It will get uh, certified for safety, and then it will get pick, picked up, and then it will get distributed across the city, actually even across to other Emirates. So, um, the food rescue program, as of now, we've actually rescued um, about, uh, we've worked with 16 um, different vendors, and we've rescued about 30,000 or in excess, and by the way, this number is about two weeks old, it, ac it actually has to be updated. Um, this also reduces our carbon footprint, which is also very important for us. And we do measure our carbon footprint um, and we offset our carbon footprint, but we also focus on reducing our carbon footprint. And this is one of the ways. So within that, the process of diverting waste from landfill will also help people as well as reduce our emissions um, um, in, the, in the grand scheme of what we're doing. So, ecology and biodiversity. Uh, we have a very big focus on our landscaping, on our green areas. We, uh, we have a process of no harm to any fauna or flora. We also ensure that we don't use any pesticides or herbicides across the site. We want our site to look real. We do not want it to look perfect. And what I mean by that is it, that it's okay to have caterpillars and all kinds of insects, and we want the kids to see that. We want the kids to understand that this is part of nature. <clears throat> and as you go through the site, you'll also see a lot of native and adaptive species, such as the Arab Arabica coffee beans. Um, you'll also see uh, uh, gaff trees. We have over 1,400 palm trees, we, which we are in the process of pollinating right now. Um, and we try as much as possible to ensure uh, that the beauty of the greenery of this country shines through. This created the capability for other wildlife to come to sites, such as the bees. So these are the small uh, nomad bees that travel from place to place. And instead of just destroying them, which is not acceptable in any way, shape, or form, we actually, you will see signs that say, shh, bees here. And that creates that harmony with the bees on site, and that creates the capability for kids to understand that there are bees on site. site. If these bees are, can be domesticated, there are different types of bees, of course. Um, we've actually worked with the Beekeepers Foundation, and we've started harvesting honey from the bees that can be domesticated. So we do have Expo Honey uh, that we provide. And it's not for sale, by the way, because we don't take more than what we need. Um, the Desert Farm, which I'm really hoping that you visit, this is one of my favorite, favorite uh, showcases. It shows the, the circularity of what we can do. Uh, it's an aquaponics, um, beautiful uh, installation. We worked very closely with ICBA on this, and it really shows you what we can do uh, in the future. And as I said, 
everything is in our sustainability report. We've been reporting uh, on sustainability over the past uh, three years. Our final report, which is this one, is 15 months old, and we're actually, sorry, 15 months long. The, and we are working on our next sustainability report, which will include all of our indicators. Um, one of the things I really do want to stress is the fact that we want it to be as transparent as possible. So we wanted to make sure that whatever learnings we've had and the challenges that we've had are out there to the world because we can't just say we're the best if we don't show what challenges we had and how we overcame them or how we didn't. And the goal of what we're trying to do at Expo is literally be a pilot for what can be done in Dubai, in the UAE, but also hopefully globally. So I leave you with that, and if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dina, for that presentation. No, you stay there if you don't mind, or you can come up here. Come up here, that's it better. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I really um, appreciate that presentation. Um, it's very, uh, it's, it's fascinating to see what you have achieved at the Expo on Sustainability, and also it's very timely for us in AIPH because uh, we have... In the, over the last year approved our own uh, AIPH sustainability policies and strategies for implementation in expos and later on we're talking about further guidance we're giving to expos because we do see it as a very a real critical thing to implement in in events like this so so thank you very much and I just want to see if anyone does have a question for Dina before I ask mine so you mentioned you, you referred to your carbon footprint and measuring that. How do you how do you go about measuring the carbon footprint for an event like this? That's an absolutely great question. So you can't really use the corporate mes method, and I'll tell you why. Because if you use the corporate method, your boundaries are different, which means that if you, if if because every country has its own carbon footprint. So technically, if you're using the corporate method, what happens is if Italy's building its structure, then Italy will be carved out of our carbon footprint if you're using the corporate method. So what we've done is we've created a specific way to do this and we're actually in talks with the BIE and others at the time because we have a methodology that's specifically for mega events. And our goal is to create that mega event methodology for any expo or any other mega event going forward. Um, the boundaries are different, which means that we have to see anything that is impacted by the expo has to be measured as part of our carbon footprint. And then we do a comparison between business as usual. So if I built this building the way it's built, or if I built this building the way expo built it, using specific materials that have lower embodied carbon, what is the difference? And that, let's say delta, is how much we've reduced in our carbon footprint. And, and, and I feel that because we've tried it and tweaked it, it is now uh, a way to measure carbon going forward. And in fact, the process is in our uh, final sustainability report, um, and we will be publishing a lot of the data from that in our next sustainability report. If you do have any, if, if you do need any assistance with this, we're more than uh, happy to help provide the process of how we did that. Thank you. Well, I think that. Um it could well be very valuable to the organisers here uh, as they're looking to create your sustainable events of the future. So thank you. And um, I, I think that or just one one question: as someone who's been looking at sustainability, clearly a lot of planning and thinking went into it from the beginning. But now you are here near the close of the expo. If you were doing it again, what would you do differently that would have made it? Uh, that made it easier for you, made it more sustainable, or, or things that you might change? I honestly think that um, when we started this journey, uh, we didn't realize the enormity of what we we're trying to do. So the, the prioritization, so to speak, um, I think what we did, what we would have liked to do, 
is uh, maybe even take on, um, for me, I feel like we should have taken on a bit more. Uh, but that's just me. Um, I mean, we measured, of course, our carbon, our emissions, everything else. But I feel that um, we should have um, maybe had another report. Um, maybe we would have been able to also bring in um, more people like you can help us with our protocol. <laughs> Uh, but I feel that within the time frame and within the difficulties that we have, uh, we had a um, pandemic. When the pandemic hit, we all didn't know what was next. Um, but we knew that there was a commitment to have an actual physical expo. So there was no way that we were going to stop the work that, that we're doing. And I think that challenge um, created for us more of a, of a, of a drive to, we're going to get this done. We're going to get this done no matter what. Um, and as you go to this side and as you see it, uh, to be honest, I'm very proud of where we are right now. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do have one more thing to yeah, say. Yeah, sure. With regards to offsetting, and I think this is something that's very important, <coughs> so offsetting sometimes has a bad, bad um, connotation. So what we've done is we have reduced our carbon footprint as much as possible, and that's the reality of the an event anyway is that you can only reduce it so much. But then after that, when we're looking at offsetting, I think it's also very important to create an offsetting program that meets uh, the requirements of the event organizers. So for us, we have a program called Seeds of Change where we get the visitors to choose which projects we will offset towards. We know that we will be offsetting, but that interaction with our visitors gives us the capability to provide them with the with all of the different options, uh, be it under people or planning, <coughs> does it have an uh, environmental impact or a social impact, or both. And the visitor through our Explorer app gets to actually swipe a seed, which is worth a specific tonnage, and that seed is the voting mechanism whereby we offset our program, mm. our, our entire program. Wow, great initiative. Yeah. Well, I think you should be very proud of what you have achieved, and uh, thank you very much for your presentation, and let's give another round of applause to you. Thank you.